hello people quickly let me show you guys how to make this seagull center ruffle autogale right before this break Welcome back. Before then, my name is Chinyaka and I'm the creative lead of Hustle Empire. All you'll be needing for this particular project is a one strand of seagull fabric and I've already gone ahead to make my base so I'm trying to show you guys. Then moving ahead is the leftover fabric. Then before then, before I, I get into the intro, I'm, I would like to show you that I'm going to be using pins, matching thread, my measuring tape rooms, and then again my leftover fabric, which is the remaining seagull. So I'm trying to measure it out for you guys to see the total length of it. So unfolded, uh, I got 32 inches folding the fabric. 32 inches length unfolded when you spread it out you are going to got about 64 inches by 17 or 18.5 inches weight so in if you are working with seagull you are going to be needing like three strands of seagull okay so what i'm trying to show you is i'm going to be using my zigzag scissors to cut out this seagull right here so quickly let's dive into the main measurements we are working on so i'm going to be measuring out 27 inches length by 18.5 inches width up to two times so look at what i'm talking about so up to two times i'm going to cut it out with my six scissors. So the remaining fabric i'm going to cut it out like so i first of all measure out 4.5 inches sorry i'm going to first of all measure out my 14 inches length by 6 inches handle like that then the leftover which is going to be giving us um 4.5 inches by 7 inches if i'm not mistaken which is that little pieces you will see what i'm talking less already gone ahead to measure it out like that so we are going to be needing that little pieces for a purpose keep watching to see what are we using it for then the main fabric is for my handle i'm going to you know fold it together like that and strand it out separately then finally cut out the main fabric which i told you that is 27 inches up to two times so i'm trying to slant it Moving ahead, so I'm trying to grab in my base to wrap it around my dough so that I can start uh, working with my ruffle all over it. So before then, you have to use your top end to press it down with your dough so that it will not be checking while working with your fabric. Then you bring in your first 27 inches that you firstly cut out and uh, you place it slightly at your dough side you know how we place that this the same way i'll show you guys how to make autogele um center of autogele with a showcase is the same method of this but in different fabric so before then you measure at 4.5 inches away from the tips then you place it at your base like that and use your needle and thread sorry use your pin to secure it before proceeding so on getting to the midpoint ensure that you did not tack it down to the midpoint pata pata you leave like two inches away from there then afterwards you bring in the second fabric repeat the same procedure that you did in this the first slide to this second slide okay then getting to the midpoint you still leave two inches away then on getting to the midpoint you have total of four inches on your midpoint of the door can you see what i'm talking about before you proceed on working okay 
so from the left side of your fabric you pleat out four pleats from this side so you make out four pleats away from that side and i will come back i would like to do a shout out to my subscribers my subscribers you guys are awesome thank you so much for always subscribing for always liking for always commenting for always sharing you guys are amazing so to my new in members you guys are welcome to my channel please do where to subscribe hit the notification bell button to turn off the notification bell button to always notify each time we drop in a new video click like and share by doing so you are not only notifying each time we drop in a new video but also you are supporting this channel to grow and at the same time you are doing us a great favor okay can you see i'm done making four please so you repeat the same thing on the second strand So afterwards, you remove the clip that you use in securing the both edges from the top side. Then you unfold in your fabric, the first of the fabric. You, you fold it in, in such a way that as if you are folding it backward, making out like a U-shape like that. The midpoint. You repeat the same thing on the second strand of the fabric like that. Then you twist it around like that and bring it upward. Then you put it inward and trying to make a knot. So that is the essence of this long grammar that I'm speaking over. Then after making your knot, ensure that your knot is so feminine enough. Tight it so well, okay? Make sure that you're working smart. Don't be in a hurry. If you didn't get it, you can it can it can always go back. Repeat your procedure, okay? Then after making your knots like that, ensure that you are pulling it so strong and so firm. Then you bring in the two fabric together like that, and you use your pin to secure it allowing it not to um, unravel that is the essence of doing so so if it, if you don't have that patient enough as soon as you are pinning it down over you are using your your needle and thread to secure it then you remove your pin but a professional like me you can leave it because once you start tacking it, you will tack everything together and remove your pin then you bring in these little pieces that we initially cut at 4.4.5 inches width by 7 inches length and uh, you use it to as an extra the reason why we are adding extra little pieces like it enable to give us the bold look of knotted we are looking forward you know this is sego is not a shoke that you can actually maneuver and that is that after that after wrapping it over like that and you secure it with your office pin okay Afterwards, you move into the other side of your fabric, then you complete the pleats. Initially, we made four pleats, then the second pleat we are trying to make here is another four pleats, making a total of eight pleats. Then afterwards, we go ahead and working on the top main fabric by creating out our ruffles okay so don't be in a hurry don't bother almost you are done pleating the up the right side you pleat the left side as well and we'll come back So I'm done pleat, uh, roughing the right, the left side of my my fabric to ruffle. So watch carefully as I sh show you the step by step on how to achieve this ruffle side that you see the left the left side to this right side. Please watch carefully to see. There is no other tricks in making ruffle. Ruffle is actually a very free hand. Anyhow that you did it, it will stay. There is no particular technique to use in making ruffle. All you just do is just trying to 
grabbing three to four pieces of fabric and uh, you roll it over like that and that's it afterwards you use your pin to secure it and that's how to make ruffle be creative just once you carry fabric you squeeze it together like that and ensure that that squeezing is giving what you wanted to be given then you use your pin to secure it and that's it so you continue like that until you exhausted you get the desire desire ruffle that you wanted and afterwards and i will come back keep watching to see how i do all of that if you want to follow my techniques please continue to watch okay guys i would like to beg for something something small please if you are yet to follow us on instagram please do where to follow us on instagram at Osla underscore empire at tiktok as Osla underscore empire at facebook at Osla empire no underscore please go follow us across the internet share our like our videos share comment over there and also you are encouraging us to do more by doing all of that thank you in advance So as I was saying, you continue making your ruffle like so and when you get to that top side and you join both of them together and you're securing them with pins. So what I'm about what am I explaining here, sorry rather, is all the places that pins are showing, you remove them and you tag them with your matching needle and thread and that's it. Before you start tacking, make sure that you're starting from the back and ensure that your need your thread are visible very important take note of it so as you're attacking you are removing the pins and once you are done it will be looking like this but before then can you see i'm touching the, the ruffle and it's mm -hmm. not standing firm i'm going to show you a trick so the trick is you tack down knotted um center knotted down to the base as you're attacking it you are pushing you are pulling it so firmly so in other ways it will make that center that ruffle upward to be stable okay and afterwards you can you see is stable now you tack your handle do the regular way we are tacking our handles all of you you know now so if you don't know click the link on the description box where i drop down how to make your base follow the procedure you see how to tack um your handle but if you're smart enough you're a fast learner you'll be able to grab one or two and how to you know place handle okay so after placing your double handles the top from the top joint together with the base you take it to your sewing machine and you run it through to your sewing machine and your delay is super ready so basically this is what i'm talking about if you're a fast learner gather around here and this is how to fix the handle of sego place it upward like that and for pushing your thread inward firstly just once then you wrap around the remaining thread round the round the handle area and afterwards you secure the needle and thread and that's it So can you see you bring it down like that and get it ready to stitch down to sewing machine and that's it. Can you see our auto belly ruffle? Thank you so much for watching. Bye. See you on my next one.